ask you to bow your heads just a moment. Let's just take a moment and pray together. Take a moment and just quiet your heart before the Lord. And would you just say to him, I'm open to you right now, Lord God. Maybe you could just say, if there's anything blocking my relationship with you right now, would you reveal it to me? Welcome in this place, Lord Jesus. We love you so much. Thank you for coming to this earth. We want to make room for you and ourselves this morning in this place today. Oh, Jesus, be, be precious to each person in this room. Minister to each person in this room. Let them feel your presence as they open themselves up to let you touch them today. I pray for each person in this room. They would allow your Holy Spirit to minister in their lives right now. We each come here needy. We each come here hungry for something more than just the norm. We know it's you that we long for, and so we just we open up our arms and say, Jesus, come in. Come in, Jesus. We love you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Hey, before you sit down, there's lots of people here today, lots of family, lots of, it's so cool to see everyone coming back in. Turn around, say hello, greet each other, encourage each other, say hi by name, introduce each other. You know, this is the time family to come home. Come here, man. Come here, man. You too. I, yeah, I want you all to meet these two. Just come here real fast. This is... So I think you gave me a, a surprised look. You weren't expecting this. This is Sandy and Tom Basile, and they are home for Christmas. Well, you don't even know who they are. Oh, yeah, you do. That's Sandy and Tom. There you are. Should I bring some other people up? Who shall? I? <laughs> These two serve Jesus in Mexico. Do we, do we have Mac, Mike here? Here. I don't know if we're allowed to do this or not. It probably has a bunch of reverb on it or... Does, do you use like tone correction or whatever? So you'll be right in tune. All right. Hey, say, I normally don't hand the mic to someone. You can't preach. Tom has preached here before. He's one. These two are missionaries in, say the name. I always get it wrong. Puebla, Mexico. Puebla. I, you know, I always get girl boy mixed up with the O and the A and all that kind of stuff. You know, um, and I just want you to see their face. These two serve Jesus a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot, doing awesome stuff down there. We send teams all the time down there to serve alongside of them. So if you ever see an opportunity to go to Mexico, these are the people you're going to be serving aside. And these people are the real deal. They're actually doing it all the time. It's great. Tell us one great thing God's doing down there. You didn't know this was going to happen. So tell us one great thing that's going to pump us up and fast because I want to preach. We had over... Genesis 1-1. No. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to preach too. He and I went to seminary together. Is that crazy or what? So. We had over 120 people trust the Lord in San Nicolas de los Ranchos in the last uh, 10 months. Woo! And, and I, I think I pronounce that town differently than you. How's that? What? San Nicolas. Oh, like San Nicholas. St. Nicholas, Nicholas yeah. yeah. So we can remember that now. Christmas time. Yeah. Over 120 in the last? Uh, 10 months. 10 months. And is that a place where we've done any wells or anything like You've that? You've done two wells there. Two wells there. See? Because you gave, you were able to be a part of that. So thank you for serving. You also have a huge BAM center there, which means bu business as missions. So you business have a, as mission. What was that all about? Uh, it's, it's a means to make all our ministries sustainable. Uh, so that we're not always depending on U.S. dollars. So we don't need to support you anymore? Ex cut it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here. No, but here's what I love about him. He's doing it, and as a result of doing this, he's able to just expand ministry like crazy because, you know, there's never enough. And um, because he's using these creative ways and bringing in all sorts of different ways to do ministry, it, it wasn't one of those things where he says, I don't need it anymore. He's like, we're just able to do so much more. And that's why this, even in San Nicholas or whatever you call it, um, is, is right happening. There. So yeah. I just love their creativity and their way of doing ministry. And thank you for serving Jesus. Can we say thank you to these two for serving Jesus? Love you guys. Welcome home for Christmas. They're going to be around, right? 
So come up afterwards, and if you want, I think he has a banquet right afterwards or something. So like, come ask him if you can come to it. He'll probably make, make it happen for you. So you can go down now. You can go. <laughs> No, seriously, these guys rock, and I do think there is a banquet afterwards. Come find them, meet them, get to know them. So this week, it was great. Everywhere I went, people come up, oh, pastor, I, I've been meaning to call the church all day. That, that tarp blew off the roof. <laughs> if I heard it once, I heard it, well, I don't know, I'll, I'll exaggerate if I say it. Phones ringing off the hook, all the pastors are being called, the tarps off the roof. Did you see that when you drove by in 113 this week? The tarp was off, and then they put a new one on, and it was so windy, it blew into smithereens and all over the place. And then the thing was wide open, which really didn't matter because it's like a brand new building with half a roof on. Because there's no drywall in there or anything. There's no flooring in there. So it could like snow in there. In fact, I didn't know they had put the tarp back on. And when it was starting to snow yesterday, I thought, oh, that'd be cool Sunday morning. Come in and see a foot of snow in the auditorium. <laughs> but anyhow, that didn't happen because they did put a new, uh, new tarp on and all that kind of stuff. Here's the cool thing. I'm told... They're actually using the word this week now. In the, in the past, it's always been next week. And you know, next week never comes. But they're telling me that this week, they're going to put the steel in. That's why they had to take the tarp off. They actually cut back, you know, the rough roof where it got messed up in the fall almost a year ago, cut it back. This week, they're gonna come in with cranes, drop huge, huge pieces of steel in. And basically what they're doing is they're going to build a building that already has a half a roof on it. So they're coming in and they're gonna be dropping the steel into the building, pulling it back up and building a whole steel girder system in there underneath that roof. Normally you do that without a roof on top. So this is gonna be a little bit miraculous. I'm told the big crane's gonna be here. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm being told it's around Wednesday. I've heard that before, but they're telling me it'll be this week. And then they're telling me that by the end of this month, the building will be in the dry and we will have a roof on it again. I keep on telling them you need to get lights in there because the moment that they put that roof on, it's not going to be bright anymore. I looked in there all earlier, and all I saw was blue, and that's the light coming through the tarp. So if you get a chance, take a peek in there, but it's going to be a great week. We're thankful. I'm starting to get um, information on what everything's going to be coming out and looking like when this thing's all done. This is going to be a blessing, blessing. It's going to be amazing. You're going to love it. But Someone mentioned me this morning, I was telling them about it, and they said, we love being in here, and we do. So thank you so much for your heart, for your attitude, and just serving Jesus and being a part of it. This week is Christmas week. Next Sunday at this time, well, a little bit later, we have one service next week, 1030. So you gotta just move your calendar a little bit later. Gives you time to get up, open gifts, have a nice breakfast, then come in here at 1030. The service next Sunday morning is going to be different than our Christmas Eve services. So come to the Christmas Eve services and then come Sunday morning. Why? We're celebrating Jesus' birthday Sunday morning. I mean, it's just, that's what we do on Christmas Sunday morning. So I hope you come. If you have family in town, tell them we go to church on Sunday. Just bring them. And it's going to be just, it's not going to be a real long service because we have the children in here. We're just Christmas, right? So we're going to be together as a church. Also, make sure um, you grab on your way out today the little cards to invite people for Christmas Eve and Christmas Eve Eve. Candle lighting services in here on Christmas Eve Eve, a 7 o'clock p.m. service, and on Christmas Eve, you'll see there's four services. So pick which one works for you, come, but here's what we want you to do. Bring someone, invite someone. Take as many of these cards as you can hand out. There are cards in the seat in front of you. Just grab them. If you're a wonderful person on the front row, just reach over and grab them away from the people behind you and get a bunch of these on the way out. There will be people standing there holding these. Take them, hand them out this week. Why? I know there are people that will come on Christmas and Christmas Eve that we come no other time of the year, and they're waiting for an invite. All right, so you'll invite them. I, was, I, I said something in, in the, I, I go to this um, class every day to ride bike. There's a whole bunch of people in there, mostly women. Um, and so I, anyhow, I just said, I said something about coming to our service and they're all like, I want an invitation. I want an invitation. So people actually want to be invited. So um, get that and do that. By the way, I noticed one other thing I wanted to mention to you today. On, on this card that you got, there's a whole bunch of stuff on there. Read about um, where we're at giving-wise and be a part of that as, as we wrap up the year. But there is something coming up for our teens. It's called Avalanche Winter Retreat. And as I was praying about that, I just the one thing that just popped into my mind was a winter retreat from when I was a teenager. It was huge. It was crucial. It mattered. 
I tell uh, parents all the time, you need to get your kids into the, the youth groups. What I found with teenagers is you never know when that one thing that is said will be the thing that will push them to the next thing. So here's the deal. Um, they're being hit all the time by all the world's yuck. You and I, we're in the same boat. We're scared about that. Make sure, don't, don't make it an option. Just jump them into the youth ministries. We have stuff on Sunday morning, Wednesday nights, and just sign them up for the camp. Give it to them as a Christmas present. Uh, my wife and I have signed up our son for it. Just be there. Pastor John and his team rock. They do a wonderful job. It'll change your kid's life. Okay, you didn't come here to talk about all that stuff. Let's talk about the Bible. You have your Bibles? I love that about you. And at this time of the year, you might wonder, where will Pastor Lee turn in his Bible? And today, I want to turn to the book of Luke, because I love the Christmas story in the book of Luke. And so I just keep on telling the story, and I want us to keep on telling the story. I hope that this year, when, they, when you open your gifts, you read the story, you tell the story of Jesus. It's all about Jesus that we want to talk about. And that's all we're going to do this morning, just talk about it a little bit more. You may remember for the entire month, we've been talking about Luke chapter 2, verse 7. It says this, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. The most important event of all time, the birth of Jesus, and yet there was no place for them in the inn. You've got to read this. It's, it's a narrative that is so wonderful, so grand, so miraculous, almost so simple and so clear and yet so profound. And while it has been told to us so many times, there are so many questions that come into our mind as we think about it because... This is the only time a virgin birth has or ever will take place. And it is absolutely central to what we're talking about every week here at Calvary. But the thought that they would have this child who was God himself and there would be no room in the inn is an absolute amazing thing. And yet, we look at ourselves, we look at those around us, and we say, you know what? Was there room for Jesus in my life this week? When he was making himself available for making a decision, when he was making himself available to working through a relationship, when he was making himself available to deal with the sins that were coming up in my life, did I receive him or did I say no? And what we want to do is begin to start thinking about making room for Jesus in every aspect of our lives. Last week we talked about some people that didn't make room for Jesus. Today we want to talk about a person who did make room for Jesus. You're very familiar with her name. His name is Mary. Before we talk about Mary... And before we talk about us making room for Jesus, because we always want to get to me, <laughs> I would love for us just to take a few minutes as we read this passage in Luke chapter 1 to think about Jesus. So if you have your Bibles, let's look at Luke chapter 1, verse 26. And I'm just going to read, and as I read, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what the text says. While it's such a familiar story, I, I would hope that this morning we would just look at it afresh and allow it to soak in. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel, Gabriel only showed up four times in the Bible, was sent from God to a city in Galilee named Nazareth. This was not a prime location. This was not where the brightest and the best and the, and the powerful came from. 
to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what kind of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. In the Hebrew, the word Yeshua, Yahweh, a name for God. The word Shua means saves. This name would mean God saves. From the moment mankind fell, there was this ongoing question, ongoing longing, ongoing desire to somehow re, re, be redeemed to God, to somehow have that connection put back together. And now the angel says his name will be called Jesus, and they would understand that to mean God saves. And then it says in verse 32, he will be great. And that word great, describing Jesus, is more than way, the way we would use the word great, speaking of something that's really good. We're talking about one who is righteous and holy and perfect. In a few minutes, we're going to get to the angel talking to Mary a little bit more and the angel's going to talk to Jesus or talk about Jesus as being the holy one. Holy meaning completely separate, righteous, without sin. Verse 32, he will be great, will be called the Son of the Most High. And this is an important, important statement. This is where the angel makes it very clear, Jesus is God. Absolute key piece of our understanding and following of Jesus in this time is that he is not a good prophet or a good teacher. He is God. And then, and then it says, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. We are picturing a reigning, ruling king who is sovereign of over all of creation, who sits on the throne, who is God who, once he ascended to the right hand of the throne of God, he intercedes on our behalf daily when the enemy comes and accuses us. He is the one who says, because of my blood, you are forgiven. And he will reign and rule forever. And you talk about something, you want to be part of a winning team. You want to be part of a winning combination. When you are a child of the king who reigns forever and ever, you know, you know that you are under the authority. You know that you are worshiping. You know that you are the child of the one true God. And you go, wow, I want that. Mary said to the angel, verse 34, how will this be since I am a, a virgin. Now, you remember last week, Zechariah asks a similar question, but you'll remember that it came from a heart of disbelief. This comes from just pure confusion. You can see this. You remember, we, we've had now 2,000 years of context. We've read this every year over and over. This comes to her, and, and she sees it, and 
it, it, it's, it's overwhelming to her. She knows that she has not had relations with a man. She knows that she's a virgin. How will a child come to her? And we've talked now a little bit about Jesus, who is righteous, holy, without sin. He is God, and he will reign forever. And I want to talk to you about one who would say yes to Jesus and make room for Jesus. I want to talk to you about Mary. Every young girl, and this girl would have been 12 to 14 years old, would have longed to have been the mother to Messiah. But now God has reached out to this young lady, Mary, and told her what is about to come. It was something that was prophesied in the Old Testament of our Bible, Isaiah 7, 14. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Now consider the fact that there has never been something known as a virgin birth. So when they were reading that, this, this all hadn't come into a focus yet. And so Mary, um, when the angel says this, confused and without context says explain this to me how will this be since i am a virgin and the angel answered her and said the holy spirit will come upon you and the power of the most high will overshadow you therefore the child will be born this child comes from god himself this is god coming upon a woman this is not as a result of a man. This is a God thing. This is something that God has chosen to do. In fact, if, if I can just go back to where I started reading in Luke chapter 1. You notice in verse 26, it says this. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God. This idea of sending Jesus to this earth was not the result of what a person could want, ask for, do, or create. This was coming from the mind and the heart of God himself. Verse 27, in fact, I just kept on underlining the word virgin because it is absolutely essential for us in this place today to understand this piece of a virgin birth. It is a crucial doctrine that if we do not believe this, and if we do not understand this, everything else falls down in everything that we believe. Because our Savior has to be God. Our Savior has to be perfect. That's why this angel announces such. Verse 27, to a virgin betrothed. Um, in the middle of that verse of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. We gotta realize this is about God's plan. And look at just before verse 29 there, the angel says, the Lord is with you. This is God's plan. And then if you'll look in the middle of verse 30, and it says this, speaking to Mary, the angel says, and you have found favor with God. Now we may think when we read that in our own English language, that that means that maybe Mary did something really, really good that God says, you, you win the lottery. You get to be the mother of Messiah. And it's not what that means. That word favor is the word we use for grace. That God, despite what you've done, despite who you've been, despite your sins, God so chose you. That becomes a powerful thing of everything that takes place in this season that I want all of us to hear. Sometimes when we talk about Mary, we, we build Mary up. And I'll explain to you in a moment what Mary does that is spot on right. But what the angel wants all of us to know is that this thing that God is doing when he incarnates in the person of Jesus Christ is something that is from God, of God. It is fully God. It is all grace. It's not something that we earn or deserve. God doesn't look down on us and say, yeah, because you nailed it, I'm going to show up and save you. Because you've got a couple of the right things right, I'm going to save you. 
I believe that God would say to each one of us in this room today, you favored ones, you who grace falls upon, I love you. Again, in a minute, I'm going to share with you how Mary responds, and I believe it's the same way we need to respond. Keep following this, though, for, for a moment. She says in verse 34, Mary says to the angel, how will this be since I'm a virgin? The angel answered her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. Power of the Most High, God himself, there's that word again, will overshadow you. Therefore, a child will be born and will be called, I talked to you about this earlier, will be called holy without sin. You see, it keeps on reemphasizing several things. Keeps on reemphasizing that she's a virgin. Keeps on reemphasizing that he is holy, that he is God. And then it says this. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who is called barren. And then the angel makes this comment, and I want you to hear this. For nothing is impossible with God. And somehow I think we need to just take those words and like put them forefront in our mind. I mean, Mary would ask this question when this angel shows up. She's confused. If you'll remember, uh, there had been no word from God for over 400 years when this takes place. When we look at our Bibles, an angel hasn't shown up for 500 years. These people were not used to seeing miraculous things take place. So this was, this was very new as she hears this, as she sees this. And as this angel explains this child who is going to be the one who saves, who is without sin, who's coming to a virgin, who is God himself, who's going to reign and rule forever and ever, she's grabbing all of this. Her head has to be spinning. And this angel says, nothing is impossible with God. The stuff that we see is, well, how, how could that ever work out? God has it all figured out. Oh, I wish that each one of us could sort of reformat our, our, our take on this week, on this life, on our undes indescribable issues in our life right now that are weighing us down. I wish we could just take a new thought on that. Rather than seeing those as the impossible, as the bad, to stop and say, wait a minute. Nothing is impossible with God. That's a message coming from God. That angel was sent from God. That's what it says here. Nothing is impossible with God. So here lies what is going to be, I believe, absolutely crucial for every one of us. What do you do with that statement? So start with Mary. Mary is thrown all sorts of information really, really fast. And what you and I know is what that information is going to look like ultimately. Can you imagine? I don't even know if she had time to think through the ramifications. I mean, she has to tell Joseph and her family, that she's pregnant and just assume that they're all going to capture this, that God did it. Um, she is going to have to watch her only son die a cruel death on a cross. She's going to watch him mocked and spit upon, people not believe him. She's going to be dealing with all sorts of ramifications from having this child. Even though it's an absolutely amazing, beautiful thing, it's going to have come with all sorts of issues. And yet, it would be the very thing that would bring redemption and salvation to all mankind. Something only God can do. But in the meantime, it looks pretty rough. And here is her answer. And Mary said, behold, and I'm in verse 38 because I think this is really important. 
Mary said, behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. And I believe the reason why the angel departed from her is because the deal was done. This woman had responded right. You don't keep talking after, after you get your yes. Mary got the information. She understood it. She asked her question because there was some information she needed to gain. And she says, God has spoken. I'm in. You may remember a couple weeks ago, we, we started out this whole thought process with, is it possible that there is something inside of me that is keeping Jesus out? So when we're saying, is there room in the inn, that there's something inside of me that keeps on making it impossible for Jesus to come in. And you'll remember that week we used one word. We said that word was pride. That when there's pride in our life, that means I am ruling, I am reigning, I am sovereign, and it's all about me. And that says, no, there is no room for you, for God. Today, as we look at Mary, who hears an angel say, here are the facts, Nothing is impossible with God because this is crazy and wild. Mary says, I've heard you, and I'm in. Here's what I believe it takes to make room for Jesus. Remember what it said, you can't? Block him is pride. What I'm going to say to make room for Jesus is faith. And over and over in the Bible, faith is described by hearing what God says and doing it and responding to it. And so if we want to be a people that increase our faith, we keep on going to this book to find out what God has said and respond to it. And that's exactly what Mary does. Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word believing what you said, and doing it. We have in our lives faith in a lot of different things. And that faith has a tendency to be impacted by all sorts of things around us. I oftentimes think of faith in terms of a key. I found this little key on my desk it's pretty, it's decorative, and it's very cool because it's old-fashioned. And there was a time that this key, if placed into a lock, would turn that little tumbler, open that lock, and thus open up the door. I would venture to say that if I took this key out to my Toyota right now, about the only thing this key would do good in starting my Toyota is if I pushed that up against the start button. <laughs> but certainly, this key, outside of being used for pressure, could not start my Toyota. And I can guarantee you that while there may have been a day that a house may have had a lock on it that this key would have opened, this key would not open the doors of my home. Things have changed a lot with cars and houses. One of the things I love about having the opportunity to open up this book and share it is that I have the opportunity to open up an incredibly ancient book and it is absolutely relevant to everything we do and say today. This book tells me that the key to allowing Jesus into my life 
the key to being redeemed to God is going to be the same today as it was 2,000 years ago. That key is faith in Jesus alone. And that will never change. The angel says nothing is impossible with God. You think about it. How do you save, how do you redeem fallen mankind? And God says, nothing's impossible. I will send my own son. He will be without sin. He will be God himself. And he will sacrifice himself to bring about redemption for all of mankind for all of time. And we have a choice right now. We can block them out by pride saying, I can get to God on my own. I figured this out. I will work my way to God. Or we can say, no, I know the key is faith. And I'm going to put my trust in Jesus Christ alone for my salvation. And I want to invite you to do that. I would like to invite you, first of all, to put your trust in Jesus if you've never done so today. Put your faith in Jesus alone for your salvation. To do basically what Mary said. I'm your servant. I will do what you said. I believe you. I'm in. And I believe that for those of us who have made that decision at a point in time, sometime a long time ago, there's a moment right now where by faith we need to say, God, there's been a whole bunch of things that I right now believe are impossible. There's a whole bunch of things that I believe can't happen. And I haven't been trusting you. I've been trusting me, and that's pride. So I haven't been giving room for you. And I'm going to go back to this step that I took many years ago to put my trust in you. And I'm going to put my faith in you right now. And I'm going to make room for you, Jesus, even in that piece of my life. I'm going to give us a moment to just think about that and pray about that in a second. On your way out today, um, we have for you at the doors a really cool thing to take with you. It's a little bookmark that says, that little phrase that we've been saying all along, no place for Jesus in the end, we cross the word no out. Because we would like for you to come to a place in your life where you say, no, there is a place for Jesus in the end. The word no was when it was all prideful and it was all me and I was saying no because I can do it, I don't need you, God. We would like you to say today, yes, there is a place for Jesus in the end. And that is, that the difference between no and a place is going to be faith. I'm going to put my faith in Jesus. And some of you will be doing that for the first time here in a second. And some of you will just be saying, no, I've done that, but I'm going to make a place for Jesus. I'm going to be reminded of this. So you may want to put this as a bookmark in your Bible. You may want to sit this um, somewhere in a very um, visible place in your world. We, we want you to have this only take this this morning as you leave the door if you truly want to have a place for Jesus in the end. And if you want to, on your way out, you can see if this will turn on your Toyota. <laughs> take this and remember that the only key to coming to God is Jesus. And that's why we keep on presenting Jesus to you here. I'm going to give you a moment just to bow your heads. First of all, let me talk to those of you who have been saying no to God all along, saying I can get there on my own. Um, would you right now just say, if, if, if you're getting this, just like the angel came to Mary, say, Jesus, I want to trust you. Just say those words to him. It's simple as a, a prayer saying that, Jesus, I want to trust you, that you did come to redeem me. Grace, not anything I've deserved, nothing I've earned. I trust you, Jesus. I trust what you did by coming here to forgive me of my sins, come into my life. And the Bible says if, if you do that, 
You no longer walk in darkness. You're no longer separated from God. You are a new creation. Old things have passed away. All things become new. And a miraculous thing has just taken place in your life. You are making a step by faith. Um, It doesn't make sense at face value. But God's Holy Spirit's making you know right now, this is real. Just say, come into my life right now, Jesus. For those of you who have prayed that prayer before, Jesus is in your life. His Holy Spirit is speaking to you right now. And there's some things that you've said, that's impossible. That's too hard for you, God. I've got to take it over myself. You stopped praying about it um, a year ago, five years ago, 50 years ago. Um, And right now you say, Jesus, I give you my whole life. Nothing is impossible for you. And Jesus, in fact, I'm going to give you this thing. I'm going to give you my money. I'm going to give you my um, kid. I'm going to give you... Uh, my future, I'm going to give you my work situation. Nothing is too impossible for you. And at this Christmas season, Jesus, I want to let you into my life. The pride that's been saying, I can do this, or I'm mad at you because oh, who knows why I just got that way. I'm going to right now stop that. And by faith, I'm going to say, you've got it, God. I trust you. I'm your servant. I'm in. I'm, I'm there. I want this to be a Christmas where you're allowed in to the end. Just say that to him right now. Jesus, come in. Love you, Jesus. Thank you so much for those right now in this room who have put their trust in you for the first time. I pray that they'll find the joy that I found when I put my trust in you. Lord, I pray that there are people in this room right now who are letting you have the key to their life that they've been holding on to. I pray there are people in this room right now that just feel relieved because you're just invading their life right now and your light and is coming in as you open up the door of their life and walk in for the first time in a very long time. I pray that you'll just, um, just sweep out those cobwebs of our heart and our soul and everything that's been blocking us from you and, and just allow, allow you to come in right now. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. So as you leave here today in, in just a few moments, If you're saying, yeah, I I put my trust in Jesus or I want to give him room for, to open up any door in my life. Um, I want to respond by faith in every area of my life. Just grab one of these on the way out. I've been carrying it in my Bible this week. It's just awesome. Right now, speaking of faith, um, we can give our gifts back to the Lord. My observation personally is that when we give to God, he keeps on giving back to us. It's a joy. It's sort of like the joy someone told me this morning. And just they love the whole idea of shopping. Uh, they love the idea of giving. Hate the idea of wrapping the presents. Um, so um, those of us, and I'd, I'd say this is a generous group of people that love the idea of giving. We get the opportunity to give back to God. And um, when I give my check, I just, that's that's why this is going to God. Not Calvary, even though that's what's on the front of the check. This is going to God. <laughs> and again, it's just like, wow, there's a place for Jesus. You have my heart, Lord. Lord, as we give these gifts to you, we do so because we love you. We don't do it out of compulsion. We do pray that you would use this to continue to allow this ministry just to expand and people, hearts, lives to be changed, just like Tom shared with us down in St. Nicholas. I just pray that many more people will get saved there. And thank you for the giving right now that some of that will go towards that, more of that happening. We love you, Jesus. Thank you for blessing this gift and blessing each of the people that are giving. Um, I pray that they will just feel that as, as they give and that you will show them that you've been strong and you provide for them. To your name we pray. Amen. The end of your rows over here right down that end of that row there's a bucket underneath the seats so if you'll just reach under your seat if you're on the end of the row and just pass it down you can give your gifts also there are online options for doing that and on your program there's some explanations on there um, thank you for giving to the lord Thank you. We bless you. We will see you next week. Remember, at the doors, there's a key where you can reflect, is there room for Jesus in your life? We'll see you next week.